Hi, welcome to the part 6. Let's look at a couple of more questions in this part. Please subscribe to my channel. Please focus on the concepts for surety of passing the exam. You will get the same or similar questions in the exam. For questions 1 to 22, please refer parts 1 to 5 of this video series. Please don't forget to visit this video series. It has hundreds of questions. There are 14 parts here and these questions are still relevant. In this series, we are looking at brand new questions. Let's jump into the questions. Question 23. We need to understand the story first. Story is always the key to understand the question. A business requires all its data to be stored in S3. Suppose you have an object here and you modify it. What the compliance says is the original state should be intact. That means it is versioning basically, nothing else. Common sense. So from this piece, that when objects are modified, original state must be retained. So this is a key requirement and this is achieved by versioning. So out of these options, where do we have versioning? We have the versioning in all four. So again, it is a complex thing. We could not, you know, isolate few options. Now let's look at the other option. Additionally, data older than five years should be kept for auditing purposes. So old data should be available for auditing. So a lot of companies, they hire external auditors like Deloitte or PricewaterhouseCoopers and so on. And the question says that old data should be available for auditing so that these external auditors or internal auditors can view the data. So out of these four requirements, which one is addressing the this requirement? Only the last two. So I'll just use common sense, pure illogical common sense. These last two is addressing the five year stuff. So I'll eliminate A and B. I'll come to A and B explaining it later why we are eliminating. But if in the exam, you don't know much about object lock and etc. Use common sense, eliminate A and B. Now we have C and D. So the first part of C and D is same. They are using versioning, object level versioning. The second part is the only difference you see is Glacier Deep Archive and IA. So whenever you want, always remember Deep Archive, that means snow. See at home you have fridge and when do you put stuff in the deep fridge like meat or something of that sort when you know that you don't want to use it at least for a week or so or you know that you want to use it for a long term but not frequently the frequent stuff you will put it here so that you can easily access it the non-frequent stuff you will put it here so in the similar way glacier deep archive is our solution here but why not ia see standard infrequent access it is costly compared to deep archive first thing okay this question says most affordable. This is a typo here. It's most affordable. So affordable relatively glacier deep archive is cheap than the infrequent access. That's point number one. Infrequent access is like uh, this area. See frequent access you will keep it here. Infrequent access is like here. Vegetables like once a day you use. Okay. And stuff that you will be using rarely like meat you eat probably once a week. So you'll keep it here. So this is our answer. See deep archive is meant for storing auditable data like for in financial you have transaction archives in healthcare you have electronic media records like patient x-rays etc P people who have been admitted for uh, like 10 years back seven years back you keep all of those records for further analysis etc in media and entertainment for example news channel you have ndtv or you have cnn or bbc they keep their media archives so that in in future if they want to access it they can access it so on so that's why this is the right answer but let's look at uh, the governance mode and compliance mode see first of all why do you lock you lock because you want to write once and read many times so that nobody else can overwrite it see the problem with governance mode is governance mode users can overwrite and delete the object version okay it, they can overwrite it and compliance mode the object version cannot be overwritten that's the difference so these two options are just addressing the first point what are the first point of the question this one that original state should be retained that is that is what we are doing through versioning and we don't need to apply locks because there is no need to apply the locks it doesn't say that you should not overwrite the data and since it is asking for the most affordable option we cannot store the data in s3 and put a lock we will have to move it to deep archive this is the cheapest dirt cheap you see this pricing for s3 deep archive all storage per month is costing you this much per gb this is 0.00099, it, it's, it's dirt cheap. And now, if you see infrequent access, this is costing this much. This is higher than Glacier. If you keep it in S3 and apply locks, it will cost a lot more higher. Hence, this is our answer. We will move forward to question 24. See, you can read this question carefully. So see, this is a AWS SQS question. 
So you have SQS, it is writing to RDS. Uh, SQS, you know, it is a messaging queue system. It has queues of data and the data is written to RDS. So this is what it is saying in this part of the sentence. And once it writes to RDS, it removes it from the queue. Okay. What happens is in RDS, sometimes there are duplicate entries. So what might have happened is, so this is a problem statement, duplicate entries are there in RDS. So the first thought we get is probably SQS got duplicate data. That's why RDS has duplicate entries. But no, there is a twist. The question says there are no duplicate data in SQS. If you see this, there are no duplicate messages in SQS queue. So how can the solution architect guarantee that messages are handled just once? So it's a simple question. Queue has a lot of data, suppose 10 records. One by one, it is transferring to RDS. Now here, there are 10 records. RDS somehow gets 11 records. So the duplicate is coming. So what might be the problem? The problem might be after writing here that it must not be deleting it from SQS. That is a problem. You know, the question told uh, it removes from the queue after writing in the RDS. So I think my troubleshooting says that is a problem here. When after the write is finished, uh, queue is that record is not deleted from sqs and that's why again it writes it see in sqs there is something called change message visibility what it does is see here the problem that happens is if you see this documentation the message is considered to be stored after it is sent to a queue by a producer but not received from the queue by the consumer but it says message is considered to be stored who's the producer here sqs is a producer who's the consumer rds is a consumer so even if um, so i like to clarify sqs is the queue the producer is here before and producer is sending the data to sqs and this is the consumer rds so what happens is the producer considers it to be transferred even if the data is not stored in rds okay that, that is one problem see the problem highlighted in the question is solved by using the change message visibility api so what it does is you can read this message so it kind of uh, it changes the visibility timeout of a specified message in a queue. So the message will be visible for more amount of time and the chances of duplicate getting entered will be less. So this is the right answer. The first one say you do not create a new queue. Okay. So the answer to this, the, just because the old queue has creating duplicate, you cannot create a new queue. The second one says permission. This is not a problem with permissions. See if it is a problem with permissions, you cannot even send even a single data. It's, it's if it is coming less duplicate or missing records that means permission is there there is some other problem third one says use receive message api to set an appropriate wait time the problem is not with receiving the message as sqs and the problem is not there the problem is that somewhere while entering the data and deleting it it doesn't understand that the data has to be already transferred so this is our final answer let's move forward question 25 so this is a question please pause it and read it carefully first try to understand the story see in an organization there are developers and then there are administrators see usually a security person operations team will assign the roles and privileges etc but here this question is saying that to facilitate experiment they are doing some experimentation and they want to bring some agility so that every time the load is not on one team or a security operations team to provide access if there are so many users the user base is very big they want to experiment and see can we bring in some agility and innovation here so what they are saying is business wants developers to link im policies to existing im rules so what is an im policy the policy defines permissions for an action for example you may use get user action then the user with that policy can get user information okay see what is an im rule it defines sets of permissions for making aws service requests im roles are not associated with user or group instead trusted entities assume roles such as im users applications etc they assume roles suppose you have a user usually first what we do is we uh, board it board them in active directory or as or uh, azure active directory or iam in in case of aws we create the user we assign them to a group so we first create the users then we assign them to groups and then the groups are tagged to policies for example one user take the case of uh, an, an application okay so there is an application where uh, a business user can create orders it's an order management application for example but a developer 
uh, they cannot create orders in the production system okay uh, they, they are not authorized to do that administrators they have super user access they can move around and do so many things but that's how it works so the question is saying that developers will be given this privilege and they don't want developers to assign admin privilege to them okay so these developers here happy developers they should not assign privileges of this administrator to themselves we have to restrict that let's scan through the options the first one is sns topic see this is a push service sns it's used to send emails sms and so on there is no such need here that's why a is wrong now let's look at the other one service control policies to disable im activity across all accounts see if you disable im activity then nobody will be able to do anything in the system and this is not the way of dealing that you will remove access for everyone you will disable the im activity itself see service control is a very good way across the organization if you want to enable or disable something okay but if you disable im activity then this is not going to address our problem statement we want people to access but we don't want people to assign themselves the administrator privileges so b is wrong c says you have to you know prevent any privileges to be assigned to these developers whatever access they need they have to contact the security operations team but that is not what the question wants the question is saying they want to experiment and they want agility so this will not address this is a negative thing i i want two piece of bread and you are saying that you will not uh, uh, give me bread so this is not the right way so this is wrong that leaves us with option d so you have to set i am permission boundary on developer i am role that explicitly denies attaching administrator policy so this is a very good way because this allows to perform only the actions that are allowed within the perform uh, permission boundaries so what happens is the permission boundaries for an ibm user or role it sets the maximum permissions that an entity can have so when we are setting this we will we will say the maximum permission is not administrator it is just a uh, developer or a level below administrator we can set that so if you see this is the right answer so we learn this thumb rule one is to restrict a user or a role assigning undesired permissions just like we saw in the previous question we should use im permission boundaries if you want to enable or disable some feature or activity across all accounts in the organization then you should use service control policies and if you want to use push services for example enable sending of sms email and so on then you should use aws sns service please focus on the concepts for surety of passing the exam please please subscribe to my channel and like my videos this brings us to the end of part 6 do please refer this playlist which is on aws solution architect associate there are hundreds of questions here there are 14 parts please go through them these are all relevant along with those videos please refer this video series which has the latest questions see you in the next part